I don't want to stick on the negative because it's too easy to sit on the negative, but there was an effort that had me not go. There was a pressure not to go. Uh, it's, it's obvious it's, it, it, the entire world doesn't want us to go there. But in, in a short, brief sense, what would you say to your colleagues now that you went, and if they were given the opportunity to go, what would you tell them? What would you advise them? What would you say to them? Uh, yeah. <laughs> The Bronx. I, the, the Bronx would say, I represent the entire borough. Um, I think I would say what I said to my colleague, you know, decide for yourself, right? You can go there, and if you decide it is everything they say it is, that is a decision that is born out of your own experience there and your own learning. But there's no downside to learning and experiencing something for yourself. Yeah, I would just say, you know, go and listen see for yourself. At the end of the day, uh, not going is a, is a statement of fear and insecurity about your own alleged belief, right? You think this place is, is something that, in my opinion, I think the opinion of those that live on this day is it's not, but if you're not that confident in your judgment, then yeah, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna run away from knowledge, you're going to run away from experience. Um, and so don't, don't deny yourself the opportunity to either come to the, a different conclusion that you didn't expect to have, or to get information that affirms your judgment. But go and see for yourself and, and see what's really happening. Don't rely on the accounts of others. You, you, have, to, you have to see it and, and hear about it firsthand. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to say definitively, I know what's going on over there. Yes, I agree. Um, I would let, tell them to go and journal, um, go through your emotions, because I think that this is a, a place that brings that out. But again, it's uh, travel is the way you push yourself. It pushes the boundaries, it pushes your mind. And, um, and Americans and New Yorkers in particular who do not travel are kind of like, you know, this is, they're not traveling anywhere, it's not just Israel. And so um, to go and experience this would be uh, incredible. They shouldn't be afraid because I was, I was, you know, I was afraid. And I, I'm always afraid to go somewhere, but I pushed myself. And journal, um, I took the pictures and that was like my way of journaling, uh, <laughs> taking photographs of my colleagues and each experience. And so it's a beautiful thing. Oh, you're next. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> we're going to put the list in that box. It's okay. Okay, so one of your first stops you're going to uh, Ms. Haifa. It's a beautiful city. It's a, it's, it's a colored city. It's uh, two huge communities, Arab, Arabs and Jewish together. You went to uh, Bet HaGafin, which is the Arab Jewish Culture uh, Center, and you learned about how the Israelis and the Arabs live together, or try to live together, what they're trying to do, share the same space. I want to ask you what the impression is about how they're doing, what they're doing. Are there any changes that they can make? Uh, as an outsider, do you see these two communities blending together, or living together? Haifa, yes, was a, a very beautiful um, city. Uh, you have to understand that we had flown for 24 hours. I don't think, you know, we didn't go to any hotel. We went straight to the, was it the community center. That was such a powerful experience because um, that is where they set the table for identity. And so how they looked at and um, you know, um, unpacked the idea of identity, is, it was a thing that I never thought of. So, you know, um, so who are you? Are you an Israeli? Are you an Arab? Are you Jewish? Are you Muslim? Are you, you know, um, Christian, and the whole time in Israel, you're, you're looking and they're talking about um, this is Israel, this is, this, is, this is the experience that you're looking at. But the whole time I'm thinking, well, what am I here? And, you know, how does that impact? Am I African American? Am I a New Yorker? Am I a female? Am I a Democrat? And I decided that I was a Staten Islander, but <laughs> that that was, but. Um, it was so chock full of information about how they break down pieces that would cause conflict 
and to um, pack it back together again as Arab and Israelis start um, coming together. These are the things that would um, divide us. So it was so intentional in how the, the activities there, uh, the artwork there, I took lots of pictures that didn't show, but they had leading questions. And it was just so incredibly interesting, like that first introduction to Israel after landing um, and going to the community center. It was just well done. And I think that um, that set the table for identity throughout my entire trip. It set the tone right, for the rest of it. So, so I, um, I, I really enjoyed that visit, and I think that Council Member Hanks was right. It, it, it was a great introductory um, visit for us for the rest of the tour. And I, what I what I enjoyed about it is that it's right. It's a shared space of different communities in the city of Haifa, and what I saw was a lot of commonality in terms of the art and, and the other displays that were there. And, and that's, I guess, really to be expected, right? Because you go into the into a place like Israel and you hear about all oh, the conflict and the differences and, and, the, and the, the clashing identities. Um, and you forget that when you're in a shared space um, for a significant period of time, you're going to start sharing a lot of commonalities. And that's just true of Staten Islanders and New Yorkers generally. We, we all have different backgrounds we may be from, but we share uh, a culture and we share a context. Um, and, and that's really what I kind of came away from uh, that experience, really kind of feeling uh, front and center. Um, and it was just, it was just, a, it was a nice, it, it was a nice sort of thing to notice going into the conversation that it was not all about differences. It was also about uh, a shared space and a, and a shared culture that uh, these different communities had in, in a very mixed and dynamic city. <clears throat> If there were, I think, one idea that I, I thought about the most, you've heard Councilmember Hanks talk about it a lot, it's, it's our identity. That's one of the things that challenged me. And she phrased it a little differently on the trip. She says, we are bringing our own uh, she, stuff. She didn't say stuff. We, we, we're bringing our own stuff to the table. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's this challenge of, of, we have our own perspectives. I was there trying to, you know, learn about Israel, but also see, you know, what are some of the things we could take back to New York City? Um, and she just articulated so well every step of the way that as we're recognizing the conflicts and the challenges in Israel, we can't always bring our own perspective to it because their challenges and their struggles are different than ours. And what makes it so hard is because with that, we had what Councilmember Carr said is that they looked at their similarities. I mean, I remember sitting in a chair and they had one of the exhibits was the Cinderella story. They had a video version of the Cinderella story, but one was, you know, from a, a Palestinian, it looked like it was from the Palestinian uh, perspective, or, you know, the Arabic, another was Israeli, another was Russian, another was German. And it's the same story woven throughout all these human cultures. We saw a mosaic of different spices on the floor. It, was, uh, it, it looked like mosaic tiles but, it, tiles, but it was made from spices, spices that some of us, whether you were a, a Jew from the Bronx, a black person from Staten Island, a Haitian from Brooklyn, um, an Asian woman from Queens, that we all recognize and we all make connections with. And then in another room, there were, it was a, I guess it was kind of a calendar, but, it showed the size of people during different times of year. So if you were a Muslim person, it showed like a skinnier person during Ramadan when they're fasting. For us, for Jewish people, it was a Yom Kippur, and we were larger during, I guess, Pesach and all these other uh, holidays where we're eating more food. And it showed these, what's it? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, that's, that's us Americans. And it showed throughout different points in the year that different cultures experience the sort of same ebb and flow of days or weeks or months of feasting and fasting. And it was through this art and these different representations through video, through books, through visual, through smell, that we saw and felt those differences and those similarities. And it, it filled me with, with hope. And it was, a great, it was a great first day to see, you know what, this is, you 